Do you understand what I'm about to do? Nope, but okay. I'm fine. Whatever. So the idea is you sign into your Amazon account. Okay. And then I browse through it. That's exciting. Let me try to guess my password. On My Mate Brought a Toaster this week, we have got Catherine Ryan. She is a comedian. She is a writer. And she has the most fascinating life story as told on this show via her Amazon purchase history. I'm on your Amazon account right now and I can yes. see your latest order. And it's so unbelievably funny. <laughs> I'm tempted to break the format. Okay. And just go to your latest order first. It's husband related, let me just say that. What, the pest expel realistic falcon wind action decoy scarer deterrent? Yes. <laughs> and it's not the only one I bought. The big cheese wind action owl. You've bought a giant owl. Yeah. I mean, please share with the class. Well, those who follow my socials, and it's fine if you don't, will know that my husband, Bobby, is a Canadian man who lives and dies by the quality of our lawn. And he's really excited that spring has sprung and he's relayed all the grass and it looks so beautiful, but he just gazes upon this garden day in and day out and he's noticed that the birds are starting to pull it up mm. and he doesn't want that. And so he was looking for help and I said what we need is a realistic wind-powered falcon and or owl birds of prey yes so we've ordered and they've arrived actually already this morning delivered today it's just happened it's really exciting so when you get back after this your lawn is going to be noticeably better mm -hmm. thanks to the giant owls yeah but it, this works they did this in um well they do in Trafalgar Square but they get a real one they get it's amazing they get a falcon to come along and all the birds just go on oh, no. yep no, 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 no. and this one's great because it's not battery operated or anything but it's head will swing in the wind, and so that makes it realistic because it's looking around. And so the magpies are like, forget it. Okay. The okay. crows. But it's it's nice when you use nature mm -hmm. to fight nature. <laughs> That's nature. It's, an, it's a civil war. Yeah. Nature is a civil war, and as long as you can encourage it, and there's, this is, there's no bloodshed, there's just a beautiful lawn. Um, why is it men get to an age, has he always been uh, obsessed with the lawn? We get to a point where we're obsessed with mowing and lawns. It has definitely uh, accelerated in his older age. But when he was a teenager, sexy young thing, I already loved him. Mm. One of his chores, his very gendered chore yes. with four sisters, was mowing the lawn. And 16 years old, he'd be doing that shirtless, and he cared. Oh, my God. I'd imagine him doing it in slow motion. Me too. It's like a Diet Coke commercial It my life. really is. Mm -hmm. So you loved him then when he was mowing lawns. Mm-hmm. And now do you love him when he's buying giant owls over your lawn? Like, it's lo yeah. it's a lovely thing, though, right? Because you left him in Canada, and then he's, he's here he is. I mean, whatever makes him happy. And yeah. I think that his <laughs> uh, lawn care obsession is adorable. And it speaks to a demographic of man mm. who will message me on social media and say, oh, what kind of mowers Bobby's and what pesticide is using? So how is he rooting this up? He'll, they'll ask me lawn-related questions. And I scroll back to two or three years ago and they would have been sexually explicit messages <laughs> <laughs> and I've got older they've got older they're not just sending me dick pics anymore they just yeah. want to know what my husband's doing with the lawn yeah they want to know about your molehills rather yeah. than your lady bumps exactly oh it's beautiful it's nice <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. more comfortable now that it's, it's sunk into law would you well, like the occasional filthy message I'm, I'm offended slightly. okay fine <laughs> like wait a minute please don't start sending I've lost the baby weight come on guys um Here's what we're going to do now. Okay, so we now know the latest order. Change the format for you, Catherine. I hope okay. you appreciate that. We're going back to your first ever orders. Exciting. On Amazon. Well, this it is, is a great format. I really should have paid attention before I arrived. I was just happy to see you. I was like, what am I? I mean, that's fine because you're happy to see me so you can forget what I'm doing and then suddenly I'm exposing all the harsh truths. Although, actually, there's nothing to expose here. But it's a lovely thing because we see in May 2010. 2010! That's so old. Mm hmm It's 14 years ago. Um, neighborhood animals, baby Einstein, lots of baby Einstein. Oh. Get clever, get clever. All baby Einstein. This suggests to me that someone said to you, Oh, you should try baby Einstein, and you hit Amazon hard all on one day, the 14th of May. The only order you did in the whole year on Amazon was on the 14th of May, which is now known as Catherine Ryan Amazon Day. Wow, 2010, 14th of May. Yeah. My daughter, Violet, who's now almost 15, would have been 11 months old, oh. and I was probably buying birthday gifts. Yeah. For her yeah. first birthday. Oh, it's adorable. And there's the the baby Einstein thing. Is there a, is there a slightly cynical stab at the um, parents trying to make their kids intelligent thing? Because there's no point in doing that, really, when they're 11 months old. No. It was certainly a trend for a time. Baby yes. Einstein did very well saying that they'll learn phonics and they'll know colors and vehicles and you must let them listen to this classical music and they'll become, yeah. you know. But now... 
But why would you want, and this isn't what you're doing here, but why do people want their kids to be intelligent ahead of time? There's this thing, isn't there, yeah. where I, I once saw a guy in a restaurant. I couldn't eat because I was so shocked by what I was seeing. I was mm -hmm. just sitting there going, but, but you, you need to look at this. And he had a probably about 11th month old baby, you know, just gorgeous thing. And he had his, his partner, I think it was her parents and his kid, and he was holding up flashcards. He was doing the flashcards thing. And the, the kid was going like, I don't know if it was speaking because it was 11 months. So probably like eat or water or stuff like that. Signing maybe. Yeah. I may, yeah. Maybe there was signing going on. Yeah. They can sign at 11 months. Well, may, I don't know. Maybe the kid was had hearing issues and that was what they were doing. I don't, I don't want to be judgy here. But at the same time, yeah. what I saw was someone being pushy with their very young kid. But it is entertaining to look at photos and to learn words. And let's say I'm a baby. Mm. I'm interested in language. I'm like, hmm, how do I say grapes? How do I say cheese? Yeah. And if you'd seen that same family with a tablet oh my gosh. showing their child like WWE or something. Yeah. That you would have judged that the same way. I I'm mean, very judgy. <laughs> Don't sit near me in a it, restaurant. Whatever will keep your child quiet in a restaurant. So Violet used to be great in restaurants. She's 15 now nearly, but the two babies that I most recently had, mm. they're terrible in the restaurant. They don't have- Screens in restaurants? Yeah, anything in restaurants. I don't care. Cause I'm trying to make them more civilized mm. because we have them so close together. We just didn't go out a lot. And my son, Fred, especially, is like one of those kids. You've got one of those, don't I've you? I've got one of those. Or you had. He's I've older got one. now. My eldest is just... It's the eldest boy. It's the eldest boy. I'm just having a moment where I'm just appreciating the fact that... And this, I love him dearly, <laughs> but I'm appreciating the fact he's not in the room. Yeah. Do you ever get that? Where you just no, think, he's still like that. Oh. Hard work. He's, a, he's really, really hard work. A lot of questions. Questions. Just a high-maintenance um, guy. Just a high-maintenance kind of guy. Yeah. Um, neat. His little brother is, is absolutely fine. Yeah, we got the same dynamic. Chill. Yeah. Do you worry about going again then? What happens if you get another one who's a full on? Package? That's exactly what we're scared of. So I'm scared of having another baby full stop because I have enough. And it, you know, I don't want to go there, but you don't know what you're going to get. And we could have a child who we'd still love very much, but with perhaps complex medical issues. And then that mm. changes the whole dynamic of our family. Or we could have a child who's chill. We could have a child who's like Fred and not it's the rolling like, of the dice. You right. don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. And some people would say, leave well enough alone. Also, I think the two that we just had nearly killed my husband. <laughs> and um, we, I, I, I just don't want to get, I, and maybe men don't suffer from this in the same way. Though some of you are mindful about your age. You maybe don't want to be an 80 year old dad with small children, but mm. some men, mm. Al Pacino, Bernie Eccleston, they don't mind. Jagger. Nick Cage. I think they're trying to repopulate the earth. It's just. Well, they, they're, they don't have to do very much. Well, this is the thing. I interviewed a very famous male comedian. I won't name him. Go on. It rhymes with Dimmy Dar. Oh. And I asked him about his new baby. Because he's an older dad. Yeah. Well, he's not old, Bit old. old. He's no, no, he's 40s. not old. Yeah, exactly. Which actually, I think, what is par for a dad? 30s, maybe. Mm. Whatever. Bit older. And I said, how are you finding the nights? Not sleeping. He just laughed at me. <laughs> you did not ask Jimmy Carter. Of course I did. Of course I did. <laughs> it was an interview. It was on the radio. I was like, Jimmy, oh. what's it like? How are the nights? Because, you know, you've got gigs and you come back and the baby's waking up. He just laughed. He did his yeah. Jimmy Carr laugh. Yeah. Because someone else deals with that. So you're absolutely right. Those Those millionaire older dads. You just, you know. And he's very hands-on dad and he loves his kids, but they have, I think, really good boundaries even because they're like, to continue being a millionaire, mm. I need to work and I need to sleep at night because I have many dependents. I mean, that's the reality of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, I biologically won't be able to have kids for that much longer, so I need to decide now. That's the pressure, isn't it? I remember someone telling me, they used to sell, it was Tom Stade, he used to sell books at the back of his gig and he would say to people, he heard from this great sales thing, if you say I'm only here for five minutes, you sell that many mm. more. It's the same thing. Your your biological clock is saying, I've only got 10 more minutes and it makes you buy more. That's exactly what's happening. Because if I were 27, I'd say this is enough kids and I'm going to enjoy the rest of my life. Yeah. <gasps> I'm only here for five minutes. Yeah. You took the words right out of my eggs mouths. <laughs> my eggs whore mouths. <laughs> we're only here for five minutes. And when you're an older woman, your eggs start to, mm -hmm. that's why you're more likely to have twins because they all run to the finish line. They're like, go on, go, go. Can you imagine? No. That's, yeah, no. If you got twins, I think I think Bobby would. I don't know what he would do. Like I think what you should do to keep Bobby away is is get some some <laughs> inflatable twins and put them on the string in his garden, and he'll just be so scared he'll go nowhere. I'm gonna put a falcon in my vagina. <laughs> <laughs> a realistic wind-powered bird of prey. <laughs> Good. All right. Uh, all right then, um, Catherine. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just imagining. 
uh, an owl down there. Okay, so uh, let's go through now to 2011. Only three orders placed in 2011. I was just warming up to Amazon, plus I was poor. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So this is before massive success has come along at this point. Yeah. But you did spend uh, on the 8th of April, again, maybe getting towards your daughter's birthday, £180 on the Step 2 Naturally Playful Storybook Cottage. It's a lovely a sort of it's a, just like a play den basically i don't remember that there you go oh right yeah there that you was go the garden that old friend oh it's a garden it's a garden shed for kids it was great it's where you store kids in the winter those seem like a good idea mm. they are single-use plastics i'm sure and yeah. in the british gardens they get wet they get moldy so they don't damp. get played with for long but they're they're a big reveal on a birthday this is the problem with birthday presents mm. it's it's the reveal so I got my son a, um, what they call those scooters that you stand on. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. You know the things. And it's a big reveal. Oh, my God, it's amazing. It's so cool. And then within two days, he's just not touched it. Oh, really? Because it's all about the reveal. Like, and the same with this. And this shed, this just get, they just get damp. And they don't really want to go in there because it's, it's muddy. Yeah. And there's probably some animal in there. <laughs> a fox and, is and made in Exactly. Nest. It's where a fox now lives. This is wonderfully nostalgic. I love... I love remembering that house. We had some good times. She used to sit on the roof and slide off. That's oh, how we'd use the house. That's good. Yeah. That's not what the roof's for. So, of no. course, the kids are going to do that. Of course. They're going to do the thing <laughs> it's not for. Um, okay, so 2011. So this is before Bobby. Much before. So this is you gigging. This is me gigging. I was still extricating myself even from my first relationship with my daughter's father yeah. I was living in a really tiny one bedroom flat in Crouch End and things were this was a dicey time in my life Okay, I think I was not I'm so happy all the time now I almost forget any time that I was vulnerable but I hate I did not love yeah. what was going on at this point and dicey because of emotional stuff with your ex, dicey yeah. because you're not earning loads, because you're throwing the dice to try and see if this stand-up thing's going to work. Exa all of that. And I'm a single mother in a foreign country, 3,000 miles away from anyone who loves me, and all I got is a little garden house. What I could, made you do this? It's my backup property. <laughs> <laughs> I was paying bedroom tax on that. <laughs> you were getting ready to move into it. Yeah. <laughs> if the gigs fail, that's where I'm going to live. Okay. And then this is a weird one. Okay. 5th of May, 2011. A dicey time. I wonder if... I don't know what's happened here. You've bought four copies of Campus by Andy Nyman on DVD. Oh, yeah. What's happened here? So I had a role in Campus. Okay. Yeah, and at that time, you couldn't stream things. Yeah. I think Netflix was in its infancy and they would deliver DVDs. Yes. And my family abroad probably didn't believe that I had a role in a Channel 4 comedy sitcom. And they said, please, can we see it? And so I purchased DVD copies and sent them. And then I learned that actually they have blockers on country-specific DVD players. You've learned a hard lesson about region formatting there. That's what it's called. Oh, region one, region two. You knew this, Tom? Oh, of course. You and I were friends at the time. You didn't tell me. <laughs> if, you if you'd asked me, if you'd just messaged me, I'd have told you in a heartbeat. Mm. I'm happy to help with nerd things like that. Yeah. Um, but I just love the idea of our oh, Catherine has gone. And these are the, like in the old days, you might get a telegram. Yeah. And now the campus DVD lands on their doormat. <laughs> they can't watch it. So I'd still doubt if you were in it. I think that was a very convenient room. I'm on the box cover. I mean, it was a leading oh part. God. Oh my God, I love it. Opposite was... the wonderful Andy Nyman. But look, this is amazing because we see the things crossing over, right? Dicey time, buying the, the toy for your daughter. That's me in the room. Oh, okay, hang on. We can click through. Yeah, dicey times. And then you're right, Tom. A big. Big I got paid twenty five thousand pounds to be in campus. Wow, biggest pay date so far at that Six point. Six episodes. It was a life changing amount of money because I worked yeah. in an office, uh, and when I started working in that office, I think my salary was sixteen thousand pounds a year plus bonuses if I sold above a certain amount, which I never did because I'm a terrible salesperson. And I would just tell people, "You don't really need this." You're too honest. Yeah. As soon as I know, if I'm talking to someone, as soon as I've got the lie bit kicking in. That, and that's it. I'm done for. Mm -hmm. This is why I could never have an affair. Because I'd just be the whole time going, I, I, I just can't do it. No. It's too, the voice is too loud. An affair would be stressful. I can't. What's going on with people that they want that mess in their lives? Well, the problem is that it's just that the overriding sexual kind of like, I've just got to put this in there. Yeah. You're going to put that key in that lock. Yeah. And as a result of that, that entire life you've got is going to explode. But if you think about 
like a meth addict, yeah. it's the same it's impulse. Just, think of it as addiction. It is an addiction. It yeah. becomes the high. Yes. And people yes. are they are powerless. And if you have any addiction like that, you mm. eventually lose everything. How have but we got some, from that to have we got from cameras on DVD? Well, I was kind of almost about to have an affair at this time. Oh really? So I was splitting from my child's father, which was complicated enough. Mm. But then I fell into like immediately another romantic relationship, which I I'm kind of glad about because I needed to extricate myself and it was the thing that eventually got me out. Okay. But it was cowardly and it was stressful. So because, because what, infidelity or because it just meant that... It's sort of infidelity. Like I wasn't, mm. I didn't like, I was trying to leave this guy, I didn't like him anymore, but he wasn't getting the message and so it, to him it was infidelity, but to me I was like, I told you a so year ago, get you out. You were saying to him, I want to split up with you and he was saying, no, you don't. Yeah. But I was quite young and mm. quite scared. Like, it was all messy. Messy times still, Tom. It wasn't an affair on the set of campus, sadly. Okay, okay, fine, fine. There fine. were a lot of Johnny, um, he's very famous now. Jonathan. In campus? Yes. Hang on, let me look, let me he's look so up. famous now. Do, Johnny, is it Johnny Flynn? Uh, Johnny, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, well, uh, Jonathan Bailey. Oh, Jonathan Bailey. Yes, of Bridgerton. Oh, lives yeah. Lives in campus. Oh. I don't think I'm his type. I wasn't then. I'm not now. But <laughs> that would have been a, a better story for the podcast. Yeah. Can we make that one up and just run with that? I was so, having an affair with Jonathan Bailey. Thank you very much indeed. Clip that. Cheers, guys. Um, all right, Catherine, let's move into 2012 now. Yeah. Um, no orders placed in 2012. Tough times. I told you. Yeah. I was busy having the affair. <laughs> By then, I think I was out. I think I was out and onto my next like terrible relationship. Was stand-up helpful at this point uh, yeah. because you could just take it, you could throw it, you could vomit it on the stage. Stand-up was a wonderful outlet. I started to get successful. So in May 2012, I first appeared on 8 Out of 10 Cats. Yes. And I became solvent after that. Okay, that was the moment. And I started to have more confidence and slowly my decisions got better and I... I the thing that I always struck about you, watching you do open spots back in 2010, mm. before even, what year did you come over? 2008. Was how fearless you were, mm -hmm. which is just impossible with stand-up. I'm still I'm doing open spots now, trying to work new material out. I'm terrified. I just find, I've always found that incredible that you, that you just don't seem to have the fear. Well, I think when I came over here, I was very anonymous. And that's quite useful. That's so useful. Mm. Off mic, when I first came in, I told you a bit of gossip about my hometown. Mm. Everyone's famous in a small town or in a suburb. Yes. And when you escape that and you move not only to a big city, but to a different continent. Yes. You're super anonymous. I had nothing to lose. It's really fun to have nothing to lose. So going back now, so if you went back to your hometown. Yeah. So it's the example from my life, I recently had to get back to my hometown and do a speech at a funeral. Very close friend. It was always really sad. And I was so nervous. Oh, yeah. Doing stand-up, it's fine because it's here. Anonymity kicks in and I know yeah. I've got good jokes. If it's old stuff, it's fine. It's easy peasy to do the jokes. But going back home and being like, oh, he's the one who went off and did the thing. Yeah. This will be good. Absolute hell. I crashed and burned doing that already. I was in Los Angeles uh, promoting my first or second Netflix special. And by then, I got the idea that, oh, I understand the brief. This is what's expected of me. Every time I open my mouth, I'm supposed to be funny, a little bit provocative. Mm. And that's what people are looking up for. And I was invited home directly from L.A. to be the compare at my best friend's wedding. And I think she's not fully forgiven me. And this was like six years ago, five years ago. I came straight from Conan O'Brien, James Corden show, promoting my Netflix special, doing all these things, to comparing her wedding. And it was full, it was populated by small town elderly relatives. Who all remembered you from back in the day. Who all remembered me from back in the day and were told, but absolutely had no context of. Like, she's a comedian. So they were like, what does this mean? And I went in like a best man speech and I talked about all the debauchery that my best friend and I got up to. And the whole conceit was oh you know i'm supposed to embarrass her with stories of like that time we went to montreal and yeah. like met these guys but but who cares because we're 34 yeah and w what about when we did but it doesn't matter because we're 34 and it's not and um it really definitely still mattered and her father was like <laughs> i was like Do you remember when your parents went away and we like it mattered a lot to all of these elderly people what we'd gone up to and did you feel a cringe thing that you otherwise don't normally feel oh did gosh. you feel it I felt it and it was a deafening silence. Like people were horrified. My dad left. <laughs> like it was it. so bad. And they told me right before I went on, they were like, definitely don't swear. I was like, don't swear. Like, and it was, it was probably, I think I actually changed the vibe of the whole wedding. It was that bad. 
Were they like Mormons or something? Why was, I didn't, why was it so sort of uptight? And... It was more uptight than I was. Oh. I could ever have anticipated. Like, I think there are family members who, of hers who still dislike me after that. Oh, that's wonderful. I don't even understand how it went so bad. But that tells you something I'm, really important about stand-up comedians and entertainers generally and how we work. We don't. I don't see any of this as real. It's fun. This is nice. It's it's okay. The the real stuff is 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 the fame of being back in your small town or back where you're from. Mm-hmm. That's when you feel vulnerable. Everywhere else, I'm like, meh, it's fine. Yeah, and and I think with a comedy audience, you expect that they buy into. Yeah, we're here to laugh at something. Yeah. Whereas this was a complete miscommunication. They yeah. wanted sincere, earnest, crying yeah. speeches only. I think that's actually more accurate than thinking about it. When I'm doing gigs and stuff, this is actually me. This is the real me. And yeah. so what can I do? I can only be my real self, right? Whereas when I'm back in those situations, back at, back at home or doing the speech or whatever, I'm playing to a version of me that I think yeah. other people expect. And that is a disaster. <laughs> that is this is not going to end well. Well, why do we do it? We should just say I'm unavailable. Or charge a fee. I'm not speaking at home ever again. <laughs> See, you know, it's dead. Um, look, 25th of April, 2013, some blue Doc Martens, 60 pounds on some <gasps> beautiful blue lace-up boots. Oh. I wore those on stage a lot. Before I found fashion on stage. Oh, yeah. I, I knew that I needed to be colorful, yeah. but I still dressed. I wore colorful leggings, colorful boots, and a black T-shirt. That's That was my comedy yes. uniform. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then you started looking magnificent on stage. Yeah. Sure did. Was what was that moment when these, these Catherine Ryan decisions happen and you go right? I now know they expect me to be funny. They now expect me to look X. Where, why did you make that decision? Well, I started playing bigger venues and more mm. elevated gigs, and I decided very early on that it would be polite to be the best dressed person in the room because everyone else is paying for parking. They got a babysitter. They've had dinner. Mm. People were starting to come to see me on purpose, oh. and I just thought it was rude to be in Doc Martens, and also. Female comics, we talk about this all the time, is we were told for a while or the the narrative was like, don't be too feminine and it'll be distracting and the women will hate you and the men will fancy you or no one will take your jokes seriously, no one will listen to you. So you see the women, and I actually, and this is very, very conceited of me, mm. but I'll tell you exclusively, Tom, I am the reason why all the female comics dress up now in this country. Have you noticed? Yeah, I mean, it, that was me. Yeah, I know that yeah. it was me. Well, it wasn't me. It was my stylist Jennifer Maholsky Bray. Yeah, because before that, yeah, com- female comics went to do what was seen as a, a man's game. Yeah, so they had to dress how uh, a man would expect them to dress. Yeah, and fit in with a man's vibe of things. And then you started doing that, and it was this celebratory. This is femininity. This is what we look like. This is how I want to be. This is women peacocking. Forget men peacocking. Yeah. Women can now peacock. I'll extend it too. I'm responsible for Joel Domit's outfits on The Masked Singer. <laughs> that was me too. <laughs> no, I really think Jen, my stylist. Yeah. And I don't, uh, I don't think that I throw my influence around. I wouldn't be like, I changed the game. I changed comedy. I certainly changed the aesthetic of women doing comedy. I. I yeah. take all the credit for that because I see them wearing things I've worn and using the photographers I've used and doing the, yeah. And I'm like, good. And then they develop their own look. Yeah. But everybody really looks nice now. You gave them permission. You're welcome. You were the permission laugh. Every good stand up gig, you need the permission laugh. Yeah. If that person's laughing, everyone else is going to follow you. <laughs> yeah. If there's no, if there's no, if there's no gateway laugher, mm-hmm. you were the gateway dress. I really think so. Do you think so? Yes. Yes, of course. I'm That's not out of I, line saying that. No, this isn't an opinion. Okay. This is a fact. Good. On another show, we'll go through pictures of stand-up comedians and I'll show you the point. And it's, that's completely true. And I don't mean it in a nasty way. They're, they're not only allowed, encouraged. I'm glad that we all dress this way. Yeah, yeah. But when I'm dead, it needs to be credited to... And then Catherine Ryan wore high heels and then everybody else was in a dress. Do you want us to put that on your Wikipedia? Yeah. Okay. Do you take a lot from that? Do you actually... I feel like you're like, I'm really... That's really cool. I'm really happy with that. I think it's cool to have a legacy and especially one that results in empowering other women. Mm. And I, it's a huge shift, a a completely ubiquitous shift that I think Jen, again, not me, Jen. Yeah. And me a little bit. It was me. (laughs) So I just think it's cool. I like to see us looking nice. And the reason is because looking nice makes us more money and I'm a feminist, but I'm a capitalist feminist. Yes. And I like to see women getting paid. And the reality is you're not going to be on the Royal Variety performance or hosting your own show or having the type of jobs come your way unless you look deserving of that paycheck and really expensive. 
I find it, it I, I completely agree. Mm-hmm. That's not even an opinion. Those are just facts. And I find it really interesting that there was this assumption that if someone looked beautiful and like it was their wedding day or like it was a, ball, a May ball, I couldn't laugh at them. I couldn't mm-hmm. laugh at what they were saying. There's this sort of thing that, well, if a man's got an erection, he can't laugh. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that's... There's almost the thing, well, don't be too pretty because people are just going to be distracted by how pretty you are. Yeah. Well, like, it's just so... It's such a weird assumption that existed before. Yeah, well... But the boys wear tuxes and they look really nice and smart. Joel Domit. Joel Domit looks... A Jimmy Carr. Yes. Walked so Joel Domit could run. I think... You know, Jimmy Carr's suits are a direct consequence of you. Let's take that one as well. Um, all right, look, uh, 2014 now, Catherine Ryan. There's more Doc Martens here, so we're still in the Doc Martens days. Oh, I had like a holographic... Black here. Black. Yeah, just black. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. We'll oh, look. A, um, yeah, this makes perfect sense. 2nd of November, uh, the cute bear comfy dog pyjama set. For... A dog. A dog. Yeah. Oh, I dressed my dogs, yeah. Oh. Did you have two? I have four. You have four now? Mm-hmm. Wow. So at that time, I think I only just had the one. Okay. Probably I was dressing my little Yorkie. Um, so how many animals are in your house right now then? Currently three, actually, because one of my exes has taken guardianship over one dog. Okay. Because she likes him the best and he was lonely. Oh. But she visits us sometimes. Okay. You go and for I'm quite still... a small dog, don't you? You're a small dog, right? Yeah. Cool. And that, you know... It's because I grew up in the 90s and the early noughties when Paris Hilton, mm. like the purse, the handbag dog became fashionable mm. and the juicy couture pink track suits. Yes. And, the, and I've never really abandoned that. Do you still dress your dogs up now? Less. Okay. Because it's so wet. I don't want their clothes getting wet when they go outside. Yeah, it's horrible. They just rot. But I loved dressing them in clothes. It's so cute. <laughs> These are gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, the etso, Eto Cell, that means puppy clothes, jacket. Oh, it's got a handle on it as well, so you can just pick the animal out. You could tell that I'm earning at this the, point. This is, yeah. Well, you say that, Catherine. <laughs> £4.59. Oh. Earning, but not that much. Chinese, really. no doubt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Thanks, China. Um, £46 on the telescopic extendable selfie stick. Selfie stick? What year? Yeah, selfie stick. 2014, I think everyone was doing oh, it then. Oh, that was... Bad. Wow, it feels like a shorter time ago, the selfie stick. That's 10 years ago. Whoa. Whoa. Welcome to time. Welcome to the nature of time. <laughs> it's terrifying. Yeah, you bought a selfie stick in 2014. Of course I did. Mm. Um, okay, then we're going into 2015 now. Toys for the kids. Um, Zealot, the life and times of Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, yeah. Jesus. So, do you know the... Uh, orator, a philosopher, teacher, nah, author. He's a multi hyphenate. Akala. I've just bought an Akala book called S- Natives. Yeah. And I haven't read it yet. Okay. Well, he also recommends this one. Oh. And the history of the British working class. Is that yeah. another one on there? Oh, wow. If you bought those at the same time, and this is nearly 10 years ago, and you're remembering that. Yeah. That's pretty good. The making of the English working class. Akala's smart, and I worked with him on Frankie Boyle's Out of Order, or World New World yes. Order. Yes, brilliant. I worked with Akala on Frankie Boyle's New World Order, and I went, this is the smartest man alive. Yeah. And he recommended some books. And uh, I looked at the length of them, and I went, do you recommend any magazines? <laughs> did you read them? <laughs> I did. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah, it was illuminating. <laughs> um, okay, good. Do, are you a big reader? No, I hate... Uh, like, I don't hate reading. Hmm. I shouldn't say that, because I love language i love learning about things yeah. i would like to be more mentally dexterous and i know that that comes from reading but i don't find a lot of time to read and if i get to read it, it just puts me straight to sleep so i don't get far this is what happens mm-hmm. you get one chapter in and you just go this is why i need a one page chapter and at the end of each chapter there's a little mini cliffhanger but was he dead or not next chapter starts no he wasn't <laughs> yeah. and then the next chapter but was it a gun or not and no it wasn't yeah. like there's no the other thing as well about reading is finding the time to do it but if you have a clear hour to read, mm-hmm. you're just not going to, it's just, it's not going to happen. Because also your brain will be constantly saying, do the WhatsApp. Don't forget, you need to message. Like, it's just relentless. And podcasts have replaced reading, I think, and audiobooks. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so. I think that's true. It's scary. Um, okay, fine. Elsewhere, we've got a uh, power, br- power brush carpet cleaner, 2nd of August, 2015. Well, that'll be because all the dogs. Yeah. Dog litter box, little squirt by the rascal dog litter box company. Yeah, so it's a piece of grass. Yeah, it's a tiny bit of astro mm-hmm. for a dog to shit on. 
Yep. That's delightful. Now, the, I put them outside as often as I could. Yeah. But it was handy to have that little bit of grass in the house because when dogs are so tiny, their bladders are also so tiny. Yeah. And I moved. So the big life change there, 2015, uh-huh. was I moved to this beautiful Gothic church conversion in my neighborhood. But it was the place that I'd always walked past and it was right in a park and the park contained a duck pond and a primary school and nothing else. And it was my dream to live there in probably 2012 when things were rough. And by 2015, I was there. You are. But it meant that I was high up in the church at first. That's nice. And so to take the dogs out was a bit of a... So you're living in a sort of like the, the lofty, lofty attic conversion in an old church. Yeah. Oh, and it was two bedroom. No, it was it was two and a half bedroom. No, it's got, you sort of described like a kids book. Yeah, you know, I love those kids books when it's like there's a nice school and a park and the dogs. And it was like... it was such, and I didn't know it at the time, but I really look back upon exactly that time as maybe the best of my life because my daughter was six, so she yes. was such a cute age, and she was my best best friend, yeah. and I was out of bad relationships. I was into a good relationship with I think. I think I was already dating Alex Edelman, who's yes. a mutual friend, and we're still very good friends. Are you? Yeah, he's like the first guy that I dated who's not a monster, and he's just such a great person. So mm. I was maturing in the sense that I was like, I should date someone talented and smart. Mm. And we sort of always had a friendship, which is why we have a friendship now. Yeah. But um, my life was great, and I started to get successful. As you said, I started to see the fruits of that labor, and that ascension only happens once. Yes. And then everything you just... You can't recreate that. That Once that's happened, that's happened. Yeah. But it's a lovely thing. You're lucky that it happened. Like, it's a gorgeous thing to... I loved that time. Oh. And it was pre, like, pre-Donald Trump, pre-Brexit. Oh, I know. 2015. Lockdown. We didn't realize. No, we did not. 2015 was such a sweet year. And also, when the kids are at six, I get quite angry when I think, oh, I'm not going to get that again. No. Oh, you were so cute. Yeah. They're so lovely at that point. Um, how was it living in an old church? Spooky? Haunted? Uh... My Nana was worried because she needed to make sure it was deconsecrated yeah. so that I wasn't swearing in it or having sex in there. <laughs> Imagine uh, the first person who has to do that. I know. Once it's been deconsecrated, should we, uh, can we like christen this? Let's do that? it. Let's just do it. Oh my God, it's amazing. It was haunted by rats. No. And that has been an ongoing battle. But finally, I think the management company has sorted it. Mm. And also it's a leasehold. Not from, God. Hold, from, from God. You've got a long-term lease from God. Yeah. And, um, when Christ rises again, <laughs> you've got to give him that church back. Just FYI. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it is listed, which means we could never have Sky. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah, because Rupert Murdoch is the devil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> I love that. I love that a little, a little square of Astro. I'm going to do this. Tom, people, do people get... Um, inspired by your podcast and go back in their own Amazons and walk down memory lane. Yeah. A lot of people go back and go, I'm going to really go through it and sit and go bit by bit. Do you this know is how I the whole thing came about because I was doing it, I was sitting there with Beth. Yeah. Going back, going, oh my God, just before I met you, I bought Britney Spears on DVD. <laughs> and she was like, why? I was like, why did you think I bought Britney Spears? Like the whole thing. You've been just... with Beth a long time. <laughs> yeah, too long. Because Britney's years. not been well for. No, I know. No, that, that was when I was into it. Joke. Um, so, so look. 2016, Catherine Ryan. Yeah. 27 orders in the year. Interesting to see, by the way, how many orders you've got more recently. So many. Well, 2022, for example, 174. Oh, well, I started working with Amazon, so. Yeah, of course. I'm a Jeff Bezos super of fan. Of course, you made the stand-up show with them. Yeah. That was a great show. Thanks. Um, yeah, 2023 is when you peak on Amazon. Oh, no. Uh, although you might still pick, there might be even more. Uh, that's 183 orders. That's not even bad. That's not that bad. 2020 in the lockdown. Yeah, that's good. How many? 2020, 269. Wow. That's really good. We should just, let's just trample through 2020, you know, because I don't want to run out of time. We've got so many things here. Um, Loads of pregnancy tests. Right. So you're starting to yeah. to repopulate the earth at this point. I had to. <laughs> Nothing else going on. <laughs> Might as well. Um, I mean, there's so much stuff yeah. in this year. Uh, you have bought in 24 Hours in Police Custody, season three. I love 24 Hours in Police Custody. That's probably one of my favorite shows. <laughs> I love it. People in trouble. Yeah. Just watching how people deal with genuinely being in real trouble. In Bedfordshire. Always Bedfordshire. Luton <laughs> is a problem. Is what I've learned from that show. It's so true. So much crime and tracksuits. What is that? What is that? 
Um, okay, good. Uh, we've got the Febreze Fabric Pet Odor Eliminator. Mm. The problem with Febreze stuff is that everything then smells of Febreze. Discuss. I don't want to talk either of us out of any sponsorship opportunities. Please don't. But I do worry about chemicals now. And it's because the 15-year-old daughter loves a uh, fragrance. Mm. And she loves... All I since I've had the babies, I don't know if I'm more sensitive, but I think we should use a lot less of it. Yeah, are you going to go off deodorant? Because there's a lot of my wife's just start using natural yeah. deodorant stuff. I don't use deodorant. Mm. I don't use any fragrance, and that's a shame because when you you're stink. breastfeeding and you no, I don't stink, <laughs> but I, I I I do love some fragrance. Yeah. But breastfeeding, I just felt like a baby wouldn't like it. And now if I even smell my teenager coming down the stairs, I get a headache. Yes, yes. I loved candles and I'm out. It does she wear a lot of... Uh, that's oh what gosh. happens, isn't it? Yeah. If, you get, if they all get on a bus, if you're on a bus at school chucking out time, there's this cloud of stuff that comes I, I didn't realize there was a girl version of the Lynx Africa phenomenon that uh, boys have after gym class. Yeah. What's, is there specific products or just... They use... Uh, oh, gosh... Not re Rio de Janeiro or something. Okay. It's called. There's a there's like Sol de Janeiro, Sol yeah. de Janeiro. They yeah. all smell like that, okay. and just anything. Oh god. There are different ones, you know, because TikTok has got it so that it's a constant barrage, and whatever's the cool thing, they have it. I always find it weird when uh, fa fragrance companies name the fragrance after a place. Mm. Rio de Janeiro, Africa. They never do like you know, <laughs> Lynx Luton. You know I mean? you're gonna say Luton. They, they never do that. It's yeah. always a place that's miles away. So they don't really know how it actually smells. No. This must be what it's like. Africa, all of Africa smells like this. Mm -hmm. Um all right. Uh elsewhere in 2020. Um wow, a golden swan, white vinegar for cleaning, pickling, marinating, and cooking. Five liters of white vinegar. So I eat that. I love white vinegar. And a lot of people use it for cleaning, but it's delicious. Do you have a little clean and then one for mummy and yeah. then a little clean and then yeah. one for you? And I didn't even know it was for cleaning until I was in America at a Burger King on a class trip. Yeah. And I was getting chips and I said, can I please have vinegar? And the lady was like, you going to wash the windows, baby? And I was like, huh? Uh -uh. Because in Canada, we put white vinegar on a lot of things. We love it. We yeah. make like soup with chips. Oh, my God. Vinegar's delicious. Uh -huh. Do you like a gherkin? Love a gherkin. Love a gherkin. Like the really proper big ones. Yeah, they're oh. difficult to find here, but yes, they are American gherkins all day. Love, love a bit of vinegar. Okay, good. Catherine Ryan loves vinegar. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew we always knew it. Descale the coffee maker and go on your chips. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. um, loads of uh, clothes hangers, obviously. Um, yep. Elsewhere in 2020. Oh my god, there's so many things here. Look at this mega 700 grams of mega marshmallows. American mega marshmallows. Oh yeah, we started doing cookouts. But yeah, because lockdown was coming. Making s'mores. Pregnant care. Told. Conception tablets. Yep. Although, oh, forget it. I just want money, but I don't think those are good for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, that's a huge company. That, that's yeah. one of the big five companies. So forget I said that. Okay, fine. We'll cut that out. Um, I mean, keep it in, but I, I yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, but how do they test it? Anyway, that's not getting struck. I just I'll think a lot of vitamins are like junk food. You just piss it all out. You piss it all out. Yeah. You're giving most of your vitamins to the fish, which is mm -hmm. great. So we have very healthy fish. That's not real. Um, 10th of February, 2020, uh, the pregnancy test strips early detection. Yep. There's a lot, 20 of those. So you can get bulk pregnant. I remember a comedian. I don't remember how, who it was. So I'm going to nick this gag. But his wife was trying to conceive mm. and he was buying pharmacy pregnancy tests. And they were something like 15 pounds a month. And he was like, oh, I could have broadband. And it always made me laugh. I don't know why. It was an old, it was from like 2010. But I was like, yeah. And um, pregnancy tests actually cost pennies. Mm. So just get them on bolt. You buy pregnancy tests with all the plastic and the branding around it. And you get two for like, I can't even remember. They were like 17, 16, 17 quid, I remember. It's expensive. Yeah, it's an expensive business. But it's warning you early doors. Having babies is expensive. But these little test strips cost pennies and it will warn you as quickly as first response, which is kind of my, it's the pink ink. You need pink ink, not blue. You can get a false positive with blue ink. Always go pink. Okay, fine. You're, you're... I take a pregnancy test like every month. Yeah, exactly. Even still. <laughs> this is your, <laughs> Just this is your hobby. This is what you do for fun. People who are trying to conceive get into testing obsession they love to test yeah. they'll test ovulation they'll test conception they just love they get to love peeing on sticks it feels like the ovulation test feels relatively new mm -hmm. when we were conceiving it was all just about just go for it and you know work out work out in the diaries don't necessarily use 
actual tests. And this is what the comedian also said in his broadband <laughs> joke. He was like, just if a baby grows within you, then you're pregnant. <laughs> it's that simple. Um, how was that first moment when you, at this point anyway, in lockdown? When did you know you were pregnant in lockdown? I didn't know. So I tested and I was surprised because with Violet, I got pregnant the second I decided to get pregnant. Right. She, surprisingly, mm. was not an accident. And um, I tried for three months and I remember not getting pregnant after two, three months and thinking, what? Yeah. Surely I should be. But it takes people a lot longer. Yeah, of course. And then on the third month, I just went, oh, forget it, because we were going to Canada for Christmas. Right. And I was not, I didn't test that month. And I also didn't think I hit ovulation time because I'd been working. And then I was sick at Christmas and yeah. I took a test New Year's Eve because I felt so ill. And I was pregnant New Year's Eve in Canada. And I was like. When you were sick, were you like. Hmm, bleh, hmm, no, bleh, hmm. because I had. This is a whole story. You're never going to be able to fit anything I say in a podcast. <laughs> I had, and I'm sure about this, early COVID, like before COVID, before lockdowns. Right. Yes. And they have gone back into blood banks and tested old French blood from yeah. November Loads of people had it in like October 2019. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. So late December 2019. 20... Uh, so no. 20, no, 2019. Because yeah. the pandemic started in March 2020. So this is pretty. So December 2019, mm. we were filming The Duchess for Netflix. Yes. And they had all these signs around on set. Like, we're, we're looking at the water. We don't know. People had gastrointestinal like involvement. They had really bad coughs. People were dropping like five sore throats, fevers, everything. And there were all of these investigations around set. Like, there's something that's making people sick. It was COVID. And I absolutely now had COVID. Of course. You're an early adopter. That's what you do, Catherine Ryan. The Duchess was a huge success, wasn't it? Um, and failure. Uh, was it? Some people really hated it. I thought it went really well. Um, was it on Netflix? It became. It was number one on Netflix yeah, for I'm a little while. Oh, Catherine Ryan. Uh, oh my God! Look at it go. It fell off quite quickly. It was an interesting time because I think it was the moment just before Ted Lasso came out that people wanted nice, mm. and the Duchess wasn't nice. Like she was nasty, and also <laughs> she was a bit nastier than I originally envisaged her being. Okay. Because I think you can be a woman who's provocative and who swears a lot, but you're not necessarily angry. Mm, and it can put people off. Yeah. So she was a little bit angrier, but I was, you know, taking direction. I was collaborating, and I, I'm really proud of the Duchess. That's but there was, a, there was an article in Variety magazine, which is an important Hollywood magazine. Yeah. And this guy, wow. I mean, he hated it, but he hated me. Yeah, well, that's often the thing. And he really conflated the character with real me. Yeah. And the review became like, Catherine Ryan is the devil. <laughs> I was like, hmm? <laughs> I mean, but any attention is good attention, right? But still, yeah. it's weird how people do that. How they still, they don't realize it's, a, even with stand up, even with straight stand up, it's yeah. not really me, guys. Yeah. It's a version it's, of it's you, a though. version of me, and it's a bit of volume change, but it's not really me. But well, he I just guess. wasn't ready to metabolize it the way I intended, and mm. that was fine. I mean, again, I'm lucky yeah. that all that stuff's fine with me. It's important that you've forgotten about his reviews and you just let them go. It's the important thing. <laughs> I don't mind. Whoever you I are. actually think it's funny. It's a pretty good review because it's so mean. So it's like, give a good review or give a scathing one. So at least it wasn't... In Do the you middle. get bothered by bad reviews? Though? Do no, they upset you? Not at all. <gasps> no. I just want... Can you bottle that and like yeah. have some of that? And is think... it vinegar? <laughs> is that what white. it is? It's white vinegar. <laughs> it's, yeah. I just think it's... I just think it's the best. Wait, I'll just try, I'll try to find an excerpt from this review. It's actually awesome. It's so funny. Yeah, please do. As you as you do that, I'm going to read out uh, June 2020. Two uh, times two first response pregnancy early test kits. Seventh of June yeah. first response early pregnancy test kit. Fifth of June first response early result pregnancy test. Da, 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 da. This is what you do. You go. You're you're turning your house in lockdown into a baby factory. I became obsessed. Yeah. Well, you have to be. Here's the review. Go on. The Duchess is a tasteless misfire by Netflix. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to find the bit it. that's really awesome. Uh, okay. Blah, blah, blah. He hates it. For all this, the show is manageably toxic up until one extended scene in which it truly loses its grip. Catherine, giving up her hopes of conceiving with her ex, decides on a whim to pursue adoption, an option treated as a convenient backstop for baby pro procurement. She tells a caseworker that she would take any child, whatever the age or drug problem, just get us a baby. 
When the caseworker sternly suggests there are some issues with Catherine's plan to adopt, namely that there is no plan and that Catherine's treating it as an obviously undesirable option, Catherine compares this woman's hygiene negatively to that of her dogs. <laughs> Adoption was only my last resort anyway. Catherine says, eat a dick. I'll stick with the kid I've got and you can keep your secondhand crack babies. It ends up not mattering. In the end, the caseworker disappears and Catherine gets rewarded with what she really wants despite a never evolving a bit. And then he goes... Okay, so that's just describing what happens in the show, which is quite funny because... But like that's funny. That's well, just a character dip being she's, nasty. But she's being supposed nasty, to be bad yeah. in that. And she is like But that's like saying, you know, like, I don't know, the the baddie in the Marvel movie was being naughty. Like, of course. What? Wait. It's so weird. It's something about comedy. People feeling comedy, they can't understand that you're doing good and bad. It's so weird. Oh wait, okay, so here's the good bit. So that was like, you know, whatever. It's furthermore painful to watch stupid behavior and stupid writing treated by its creator as subversively intelligent. I, unlike Catherine, believe people who have been adopted, like my own daughter, oh God. can do anything. <laughs> Personally speaking, I hope that even if she's never handed a megaphone as massive as Netflix's, she grows up to do more than create art as devoid of purpose, humanity, or worth as Guys. Gosh. Awesome. A moment when they say, my my adopted daughter, yeah. and you're like, okay, right, I see what's happened here. Yeah. Fucking hell, man. I mean, it's just that thing. It was a joke. It was a joke. And I'm just sat at home trying to get pregnant. And that's what you're doing. The hot, I mean, like, yeah, exactly. Otherwise, you might have to adopt one. And clearly, you Don't factually want... hate adoption, as you can <laughs> tell it. from that fictional show. <laughs> Um, all right, 2021, Catherine, and we're running out of time, right? So mm, we're going to mm, we're going to mm. just power through some bits and bobs. You've bought loads of TV, by the way. Yeah. Um, you've bought 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After. One of my favorite shows. Tell me about that show, please. It's great because it's my story of people moving abroad mm -hmm. to find love, but it really distills all the elements that you usually like of a reality show because there's a clock because you've got to get the fiance visa within 90 days of them coming over oh, good. and they've always got a language barrier and a cultural barrier and and it's like it's just an awesome show full of i love the fact that you like that show where someone goes abroad to find love and yet you came abroad and then just got your love shipped over exactly that hmm? yeah there you go it's a way to do it you're not going to find it over here there's nobody over here no British men are awful. I tried. Um, twenty twenty one elsewhere. Body revolution. Uh, dumbbells here. One hundred and seventy pounds on dumbbells. That's yeah. for my husband. Yeah, but he is fit as, and that'll be why. It's mm -hmm. a lot of dumbbells. One hundred and sixty pounds elsewhere. One hundred and ten pounds on the adjustable weight bench. So has he got a home gym? He has. You're you're in very kind of gender normative stay uh, uh, know, place here. He's I got. Know. You're buying more of this um, <laughs> uh, ninety day fiance, and at the same time he's buying dumbbells. Just saying. I know. You're sitting in the rolls. Um, okay. Uh, elsewhere in uh, 2021, so many purchases. I mean, that's probably the reason why you've got so many purchases that year, because a lot of it's um, TV programs. Essential oil diffusers. Ooh, that was my daughter. That was influenced to her on social media. Nice. But, you know, we still use that now. That's nice to have. Everyone likes a nice smell. Mm -hmm. And it's not fragrance. It's just like a nice yeah. oil diffusion. It feels like a sort of, it feels like a friendly vape. Like a spa <laughs> friendly vape. You know what I mean? Like a yeah. fruity vape in the corner of the room. Harmless. I like it. Um, Gatorade G Series Cool Blue Raspberry Gatorade. That's hard to find. It is. It's delicious. And we don't yeah. like Lucasade. We're not a Lucasade family. It has to be Gatorade. No so Powerade. No. Is it, a, is it a sort of energy drink, Gatorade? No, it oh. is a electrolytes replacement oh drink. fine okay yeah yeah good 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 yeah. all right good noted um better than vinegar nice um uh, 131 pounds on a petrol water pump what's that <laughs> i don't fucking know oh i know what that is so bobby my husband dug a massive hole in the lawn which was tough for him to do oh we had to dig into the lawn you dig into the lawn oh, and we found that guy. underneath it was rock and clay and he made a trampoline for my daughter but not an elevated one, one that's dug into the lawn. They're lovely. Less likely to hurt yourself. Yes. You can't fall off of it. Yeah. And then it started filling with water every time it rained because it's poor drainage. Oh, yeah. So we had to get a pump. So, so it's raining. It's yeah. probably goes outside. Yeah. And he's now pumping out the water from the trampoline. Yeah. Oh, love it. But these things start with such good intentions. They like, do. The idea of your man out there, you know, he was mowing a lawn when you saw him as a teenager, and now he's out there probably topless. Digging a hole in the back lawn. Doing our heteronormative gender <laughs> rules. <laughs> totally, totally. Um, all right, good. Uh, elsewhere um, in 2021, uh, £86.99 on the Misiki Foot Spa Bath Massager. Yeah. Yeah, okay, massage face. We now know what Catherine Ryan's massage face looks like. I love that. How often do you get a massage? Not often enough because, mistake. you know, with small children, that you just have a small window in the end of the night 
And do yeah. I want someone from an app coming to the house? Get okay, Bobster to do it. Mm. Does he good? Does he do a good massage? No, nope. he doesn't have the patience for it. I do a very good massage, but I just don't. You don't I, still I after do, twenty one years give your wife a massage. Uh, I, I do, what? but only only because it's a sort of you know it's an exchange, right? It, it, well, look, I will Is give it a you, means to an end. No, but it's not, not not sexual. But it's like she does loads of stuff. Yeah. So it's I guess I have to do that. It's huh. and also it's a skill, and I quite like doing it because I really. You know, you can because she likes to really kind of get stuck in and yeah. I think I'm quite good at it. And maybe she's done that thing of saying, you know, when someone says, "Oh, you know, you should do that. You're really good at doing that because I just want you to do the thing." Yeah. But I genuinely think I've got quite a good skill at it, so oh, I really huh. get into it. How long are your massages? Um, that's the other, not probably not long enough, but like ten minutes maybe. Ten minutes is mm. better than zero minutes. It's to the tune of ten. It is, it's not too bad. It's fine. But um, I like giving massages. Um, 21st of May, 2021, The Audacity, the first book from superstar comedian Catherine Ryan. You've bought 10 copies. Again, not available in Canada. I had to send it to the relatives. But this is not region blocked, no. so they can read it. Well, some of them are region blocked by their lack of education. <laughs> <laughs> they try to read it. <laughs> I'm from a very small town. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it's a good thing. And was that your, was that your first book? yeah something of a memoir yeah mm -hmm. how was that writing that it was fun actually because everybody left me alone oh. and I love being left alone oh. and my publishers were really cool that they were like just do different sort of how to chapters loosely related to events in your life and then mm. we'll receive those and I can I am surprisingly literate mm. and they did very little editing I loved it oh nice yeah but as a stand up you know your voice and you know what works and you just put that on the page that's right? helpful and I'm very um transparent like I'll just put it all on the page and I wanted it to be a little bit like the early Katie Price biographies that I'd read when I'd come to the country an icon yeah Amazing. do you know like people want to know about sex with Dane Bowers and stuff like that and yeah so I tried to put a little bit of salaciousness in it but also comedy memoir what was the most salacious thing that was in it do you remember well Louis Theroux asked me about it to my face in my home in front of my children and while they were somewhere in the house <laughs> He's like, tell me, you know, Louis Theroux. Yeah, but he does it in a sort of nice, oh, no, so, um, yeah. Yeah. sorry to ask, but, you know, do you take it up the arse? I mean, that's basically, Louis Theroux is just constantly saying things where you're just like, well, how have you got away with that? It's pretty much that. But he wasn't prepared for, well, I really love Louis Theroux, by the way, but he wasn't ready for me being like, what story do you want on the BBC? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I woke up with cum all over me and, you know, oh, so I heard you sucked off your boss to leave work early. I was like, yeah, because, <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not. It's necessarily proud of everything that has transpired in my life, but I'm certainly not ashamed of it either. I won't lie about it. No shame, no fear. No. Oh, I love this. Yeah. And we're running out of time. I'm sorry. I'm keeping you too long because like this is just. I'm going to do well, two I know more what things. I need to do if I uh, want to leave early. You just yeah. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> Give us the room, Jack. Um, tenth of June, twenty twenty one. A five meter extra long phone charger. Oh, those are game changing. But so they break. Good. Yeah, they're at the end. I know. They're not know. official. That's the problem. You've got to go official. I decided yeah. lockdown, not enough. I want to be bedridden. <laughs> Just have endless wire. I love it when you set yourself up in bed and you've got all your charges there. <laughs> yeah. Laptop, phone, yeah. watch. Like, oh, God, it feels good. Yeah. Connected. Um, all right, look, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the last few things. I mean, to be fair, Catherine, we've already done the, the latest thing at the beginning yeah. of the show. So that's done, right? But let's just see uh, where you are. You've bought on the 29th of February, 2024, on the leap day, mm. on the extra day given to us by our Lord Jesus to, uh, this year. Yeah. All sorts of stuff. It's a huge uh, lot of stuff. Uh, kombucha organic, certified organic sourdough starter. Oh, Tom. Talk to me. Oh, I've been radicalized by Mormon TikTok. So I thought I was following this model called Nora Smith. Yeah. She's really beautiful, great big lips, lovely children. She's like 22 with three kids wow. and she's pregnant. Wow. And she's always cooking for her family. She'll be like, this morning my toddlers wanted cinnamon toast crunch cereal. So that's exactly what I got started on. And then she like goes out in her garden and picks like fresh wheat and then like she makes absolutely everything from scratch and she makes bread and so I decided that to be a good wife and mother I also needed to make bread interesting and then I realized that I'm just being rounded up by Mormon TikTok she's a Mormon or she and her husband are Mormon and they this is like what they do <laughs> is there a point when you make the bread and th so there's a sort of so she's getting you in with the content and then there's one video that just says 
Not yet. It's Jesus, but that's coming. It's coming. You know that's coming. And it's like the soft sell of like, oh, you liked the feeling of, Mm. you know, making dough for your family and searing that meat and putting it in the oven for date night. And you're a a good wife and mother, aren't you? And then don't you want to have more kids? And actually, Mormonism could be for you. I think you're breeding like a Mormon. Now you're eating like a Mormon. All you've got to do is start praying like a Mormon. And you're in there. Listen. Catherine, as we've seen throughout your Amazon purchase history, all these chapters in your life when things happen and, and because you're so brilliant, you're so talented, things have gone well. This is the next step. We've got an exclusive on the show. Catherine Ryan is about to become a Mormon. Um, yeah. then, now we know how it happened, all because of TikTok. I like their musicals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we know I love money <laughs> and collecting kids. Multiple husbands. I'm into it. That's fine, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All about the bigamy. Um, so I can't thank you enough for coming to do this. I've had a lot. Time. It's so nice to hang out with you and just it's so funny. And guess what else? I'm a fan of this podcast now. Listen back, everyone's done it. I know. There's loads of episodes. And it's was, a great way to get to the root of people. That was that's the idea. I love it. I oh, you didn't even talk you. about my intradental brushes. Tell me about your intradental brushes. You just have to use them. It's mm. good for you. Too. Uh Catherine, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been brilliant. Uh, good luck with your future as a, a Mormon elder. Thank you. I think it's gonna go really well for you. Thank you. I've always thought you were a bit Mormon in my head, so that worked. Yeah. Um, what, do you feel like you've learned anything doing this? I have loved reminiscing upon what might have been the best years of my life, the 2015s of it all. Yeah. Weren't we lucky to be alive at that time? Yeah. Purchasing like toy houses and indoor dog litters and all I the fun things. That's the thing. There is something in that, that the, the time when you couldn't necessarily afford loads of stuff, but you get that one item and it's all the sweeter and more special for it. And our life and our memories are kind of defined by... These pur- purchases and how wonderful that Amazon keeps a record of them. I know it's brilliant. Gosh, if they ever pull the rug on that, if I ever log in and Amazon's <gasps> like, no, you can't do that anymore. Oh, it'd be awful. This is di- it's a diary. It's your real. It is. Diary. So good. Dear Amazon Diary. Oh, I love it. Um, Catherine, I don't need to plug your socials. You know, everyone knows where you are. They can follow you and all the bits and bobs. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's so lovely to see you. It's my mate. Oh, it's my mate. Oh,